Hello children, Sony ma'am here. Dear children, tell me one thing. Do you really think that beautiful things inspire us to live on and maintain our goodness? Are beautiful things worth treasuring? Well, to get the answers, let's study a lovely poem titled A Thing of Beauty written by the famous romantic poet John Keats. Hope you all are enjoying my modules. In this module, you will learn about the essence of the significant poem in a very lucid manner so that you can get about the poet, introduction, theme, annotation means explanation line wise, poetic devices. So, let's begin with the poem. About the poet Of all the great poets of the early 19th century, John Keats was the last to be born and the first to die. Born in 1795 in the city of London to a poor stable keeper, was apprenticed as a surgeon but soon left the medical profession to devote his life to literature. He received much encouragement and inspiration from his friends and gave his best creation, the great odes, in the last phase of his life. He breathed his last in February 1821 at the age of 26 and is still rated among the greatest romantic poets of England. Now, introduction. A Thing of Beauty is a short piece taken from John Keats' famous epic poem, Endymion, a poetic romance which is based on a Greek legend. Keats, like all other romantic poets, believed that the materialistic world has given birth to greed, corruption, lust and craze for materialistic benefits. According to them, Nature is the ultimate source of peace, happiness and joy. It's a beauty in all its forms. Earthly beauty and spiritual beauty can take away the gloom from human heart. In fact, the poem is about the poet's views on beauty and its significant role in the life of human beings. The poem depicts the quest of human soul for ideal beauty. The tone and the style. The tone of the poem is very loving, peaceful and optimistic. Assertion and firm belief in the non-destruction of beauty. Appeal to realize the power of nature. The style of the poem is written in rhyming couplets and the rhyming scheme employed is AABB. Now let's move to annotation. Explanation line wise. First stanza. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but will keep a power quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. The poet says that a beautiful object is always a source of eternal and endless joy as it makes a lasting impression on our mind. Its attractiveness increases many folds each time we visualize it. Its effect is very profound, one which never fades away into vacuum. It provides us a cool and peaceful shelter and a blissful sleep full of sweet dreams. In our times of trouble and act like a nutrition for healthy mind with tranquility, peace and serenity, keeping our lives free of turmoils, it refreshes and relaxes us. Next stanza. Therefore, on every morrow, are we wreathing a flowery band to bind us to the earth? 
spite of despondence of the inhuman dearth of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching the poet now draws a conclusion that since the bounties of the earth fascinate us and give us eternal happiness so every morning we renew our link with nature when we weave a band of flowers similarly beautiful memories or experiences are like wreaths of beautiful flowers that is a bond and a new hope that acts as a connecting link with the nature the poet refers to the sufferings darkness and hopelessness which human experiences at various junctures in life tormenting period of sadness trials and tribulations one encounters in life as well as unfair means adopted there is a shortage of noble souls who show magnanimity and generosity it helps us to get over low spirits loss of hope and pain make us search the purpose of our existence in such depressing moments a sight of beauty brings a ray of hope to make our life worth living next stanza yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pall from our dark spirits such the sun the moon trees old and young sprouting a shady boon for simple sheep and such are daffodils with the green world they live in the poet says in spite of manipulative ways negativity a sight of beauty dispels the covering of gloom from our dampened and demoralized spirits and makes way for hope the poet further reminds of the concept of eternal beauty that uplift our spirits by giving the examples of heavenly bodies like the sun the moon trees old or young as a symbol of protection from tormenting heat intensive light as the blessing of a shady rest place for the sheep of god that is humans the sh- the poet uses powerful images like sheep that are envisioned as the embodiment of innocence and divine beauty specific example of biblical allusion he also cites the example of eternal beauty at its best in the rich green pastures and meadows where the flowers like daffodils which live surrounded by the splendor of green plants next stanza and clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make gans the hot season the mid forest break rich with sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms and such too is the grandeur of the tombs the poet draws our attention to the small rivers with clear water that alone render a cooling and soothing effect and provide respite in hot season he reminds us of the resplendent beauty of the thick ferns found in forest which is full natural beauty of the musk rose with its fragrance spread in between they make both the forest undergrowth and nature rich these ordinary things too have the potential to lift the human spirit and fill it with pure joy in addition to bounties of nature there are many other things which add various colors to otherwise meaningless life our magnificence and splendor is also associated 
with dooms of great men, warriors, saints. Doom here refers to the ruins of the great deeds of the legendary heroes. Next stanza. We have imagined for the mighty dead all lovely tales that we have heard or read an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from the heaven spring. The poet reminds us that beauty is also found in legends that narrate the grand sacrifices of our martyrs. They are called mighty, that is brave, as they lived life of ideals and died bravely and selflessly to provide happiness for the others. They are dead, but their grand deeds are immortal, immortalized in memory as inspirational vibes. The poet sees the death and decay also. He feels it is not limited to birth and growth. The glorified tales of our legendary heroes that are heard or read in the form of literature, even scriptures in praise of them who sacrifice their lives for a noble cause are source of everlasting inspiration and happiness. In the concluding couplet, the poet compares this form of supernatural beauty to an eternal fountain of heavenly nectar that is the driving force and is a source of the drink of immortality which is being poured on us from the corner of heaven. This blessed nectar is an elixir of life, a never diminishing source of pleasure and delight. They are surely God's divine and the greatest gift to us to cope with the harshness of life, enabling us with the strength to fight the odds of life. Hence, a thing of beauty is the ultimate source of happiness. So children, we have covered the annotation means line-wise explanation along with the introduction and the poet. Rest of the part that is theme, central idea, poetic devices, we are going to continue in the next video. Till then, take care and goodbye.